Mike takes offense to the surgeon now. I hope I'm on the phone. We sit next to you, but who do you, who do you think you're telling to shut up? Who do you think you're telling to shut up? Uh, brothers and sisters, as we begin to look into uh, this text that's been centered for our, centered for our consideration today, uh, it's in this particular text that we find the story that consists of blind Bartimaeus. Uh -huh. This story consists of blind Bartimaeus who is sitting by the roadside as Jesus is passing by. And in the midst of Jesus passing by, he hears the commotion. Uh, he is told that the commotion is Jesus, the son of David, uh, that is passing by. And he realizes at that moment that he needs to make a connection with Jesus. So he begins to cry out for the Lord. The text says in the midst of crying out for the Lord, uh, people realize that he was hollering and he needed to be quiet. So someone leaned over there to him and they politely told him, would you please be quiet? In the midst of being quiet, he realized that in spite of them telling him to shut up, he realized that there was something he needed from the Lord. The Bible says that he cried even the more. I found it was interesting when you look at this text in Mark because this story is actually recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke is what we call in the preaching industry the synoptic gospels. The synoptic gospels just simply they tell the same story almost in the same format. Simmerage wording of the same story. Um, but when I go back and you look at Matthew's account, I found it interesting because in Matthew's account, Matthew just simply says, and there was a man that sat by the roadside begging. He does not give this man no name. All he does is let us know this man's condition. That's right. When you look at Matthew, Matthew not only says that there was a man by the roadside, but from Matthew's perspective, he says there was two blind men. All right. Uh, which means that in the midst of one man begging, he realized that this beggar had a friend who was also a beggar. All right. And he says they sat by the roadside begging and folk moved by. When you look at Luke, Luke gives an account. Luke says that there is a man who sat by the roadside. This man that's sitting by the roadside is a beggar. All right. uh, he does not give no name to this man. All he Luke does is once again tell a similar story. But what he does is lets us know that this man is only identified by his condition. Yes. When you look at Mark, Mark says that there is a man by the roadside and the man is begging. But I love Mark because he does not want the reader to only identify this man by his condition. <laughs> But he wants this man to be known by his entitlement yeah. by giving us his name. Right. He tells us that this man is blind Bartimaeus. And what he really was trying to let us know is that even though this man has a condition or an issue, he still has an identity because he still has a name. Y'all missed it right there. We don't no, right. In other words, in spite of this man being blind, in spite of this man having challenges and conditions that has limited his movement in life, which means that he has to rely on somebody to do this and someone else to do that. At the end of the day, he is not defined by his issues or circumstances, nor his condition. But this man still has a name, and his name is Bartimaeus. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that when God looked upon me, that he did not just look at my conditions or my circumstances, but when God looked at me, he realized that I still have a name. Look at somebody else on the other side, they'll catch it after a while. Folk have called you all kind of stuff, only because they have tried to identify you by your condition. But at the end of the day, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you, because you still got a name. And if you don't know what that name is, I got a name that above all names. In the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow down. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor. It don't matter what you think about me. It don't matter how you feel about me. But at the end of the day, I got a name, and his name is Jesus. And all I got to 
do is call on his name because he gave me a name that is above all names and no longer am I identified by my conditions or my circumstances or situations but I'm identified by my name look at your name and say you better learn to put some respect on my name my name comes with respect and you need to call me by my name and whether you know it or not my name is a child of God I'm a child of the king of kings I'm a child of the lord of lords I got a name he says watch this he says I don't want y'all to identify this man by his condition he says but I want this man to be identified by his name and in spite of what this man has to deal with in spite of what this man is going through and although this man is limited in his life he still needs to be defined by his name he says his name is blind Bartimaeus and he's sitting there by the roadside which means that someone has to bring him day in and day out to a place and set him there and watch him be and when night falls they pick him up and take him back home and still in the same condition and this rehearses over and over and over and might I suggest to somebody in here you got to be careful of how you allow folk to drag you from one place to the other because folk will watch you in your situation only that they can look down on you instead of giving you a hand up. Look at somebody, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor. You got to limit your favorite five coming into the next year. You got to watch your circle coming into the next year. Because some folk will watch you only to get a hand out but never give you a hand up. There's some folk that's glorying in your misery. They glorying in your failed marriage. They glorying in your lost job. They glorying in your broke pockets. They glad you ain't got nothing. Don't want you to see nothing and praying you will never have nothing. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you got to be careful how folk bring you to a place in life because folk will just bring you to a certain place only to watch you fall on the need of having the bed. That's right. Uh, watch this. Uh, I know this ain't going to make you shout. I know this ain't going to make you shout because watch this. Uh, either you are the one looking down on someone or you might just be the enabler of someone's life. Folk drag this man day in and day out and they place him in a position that he has to ask for a hand out yes, sir. and not give him a hand up. I wish, I wish I could ride that horse right there. And many of us now have become dependent on folk looking for handouts when we got a God that said I don't specialize in handouts but I specialize in hand up. I feel like preaching in here today. Look at somebody and tell them my handout days are over. Because I'm going to go to the master. Because he didn't give me a handout. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, he's there, he's on, he's on the side. Uh, someone's bringing him day in and day out. Enabling him to stay in his condition. Uh, he's there in his condition. And they are... Bringing him day in and day out, and day in and day out, he's begging. Right. He's begging day in and day out for a hand out. Yeah. yeah. And no one wants to give him a hand up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says there's it's a noise of Jesus passing by. Yeah. He asks the question and he says, Who is this? What is this commotion? What's going on? They say, Who is this? What's happening? Something is going on. They say, It yeah. is Jesus of Nazareth. Uh -huh. The son of David is coming by this way. Yeah. He said, oh Lord, Jesus, son of David, yes. have mercy yes. on me. Yes. Now I said, well, I said, got a problem with the text. Got a problem with the text. What's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, here's my problem with the text. The um, problem with the text is, uh -huh. the one that can help him, he cries out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And the folk that's around him don't deem him worthy for help. Mm -hmm. right. That's good right there. Even louder. Yeah, he does. And he says, Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. On me. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, stop letting folks silence your cry. Uh, we come into a day in an age now in a generation that truth be told, we got to stop putting on facades and airs for folk in our lives. Uh, 
Because at the end of the day, if anyone's going to change my circumstances, if anyone's going to change my condition, it's going to have to be Jesus. And I heard it said like this, that a closed mouth don't get fed. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm tired of keeping my mouth closed. I'm tired of keeping my mouth shut and, and, and allowing folk to silence my cry. Because at the end of the day, if anybody going to change my circumstance is going to have to be Jesus. If anybody can open up my blinded situation, it's going to have to be Jesus. If anyone that can turn this situation around, it's going to have to be Jesus. And if I got to cry all night long, I'm going to cry until the Lord show up. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, if I got to cry in the midnight I'll cry until my Savior show up. Watch the Bible, if you will. The Bible says that this blind man couldn't see Jesus, but he heard that Jesus was passing by. I come to let somebody know I may not see Jesus moving in my life. Yeah, but. Step out the boat. Peter got out the boat and began to walk on water. I heard why Paul was on his way to persecute Christians. He ran into Jesus on the Damascus Road, blinded him for three days, sitting in the Ananias house, told Ananias to take care of Paul. He gave Paul a sight.
Yeah.